Hello, everybody. We are so excited to be here. My name is Lisa Staples. I'm the Louisiana State Representative for OPEN, the Oral Health Progress and Equity Network. I am also the Oral Health Lead, Move, Grow program, and it is based out of the LSU School of Dentistry. Hello, everyone. I'm Celeste Terry, a dental hygienist with Excel Incorporated, which is a federally qualified health center, and I am the Louisiana Grassroots Representative with OPEN. Yes, and today we are excited to share information about OPEN at the second annual Louisiana Oral Health Summit. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we will be talking about open system updates, open communities, open policy summit, and how you can get involved. So in open, we have commitments as an organization of over 2,500 members, where we catalyze the network to take on America's oral health challenges so that everyone has an equitable chance to thrive. Next slide. So at our convening this year, this month, um, we actually began to look at open systems challenges and how to change um, change the system. And with that, we have strategic planning proposal. And as you can see here, um, we have system leverage change points, and it comes down to prevention and intervention, bring care to where people are, amplifying the consumer voice, and engaging and integrating medical and dental um, components, as well as advancing policy. So as you can see, the various colored dots relates back to our system change chart. The blue dots are amplifying consumer voice, uh, prevention and intervention are the red dots. The orange dots are where we would like to advance policy and the green dots are bringing care to people. And the purple dots, my favorite color, are in engaging and integrating medical with dental, as we know the mouth is part of the body. And right now we are developing this system map change. And while in doing so, we are listening to the community and developing models. And then from there, we'll be piloting and testing and hopefully creating change for an improved oral health system. Next slide. And OPEN has compiled our open systems change strategy process and progress update that uses the guiding star and near star language about how different upstream and downstream causes can, can explain where we are as a country and where we can go. And so if you'd like to access the full document, you can click, we'll give access to the slides, you can click and read more about the methodology and a more general approach of OPEN towards obtaining these goals that Celeste had explained. So continuing further, again, the same thing we always pitch and highlight is open communities. This is your chance to get involved and join the network. www.oralhealth.network create an account. It's very easy, very accessible. You get access to a bunch of information. You can connect with other stakeholders, across the country and within our state. I think for me personally, it has helped grow and just gain more knowledge about oral health and about oral, the oral health needs across the country. Uh, Celeste, I don't know if you wanna share anything in particular that OPEN has enabled because you've joined OPEN Communities. Oh yes, uh, OPEN, being involved with OPEN has allowed me to meet um, members that are working in and outside of oral health care across the United States. And it has provided me the opportunity to learn uh, from take 20s, take 30s, take 60s, as well as access a number of uh, resources that are available on open communities and to stay abreast of the latest um, things that are happening across our nation as it relates to oral health and most recently COVID-19. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. And in particular, for me, I am also the co-lead of the Rural Network Response Team, which we'll explain in a little bit. But in that leadership role, I have been able to connect with rural leaders across the country, tackling rural oral health and how to attain access, data, information around how to combat the challenges that rural communities face. And so in that network, it has created that space to have those conversations and keep learning and growing on how to make oral health accessible. And so continuing, open, if you just want to learn about open in general, you can just go to the openoralhealth.org website. It explains it, it gives a nice overview of what open is and what it stands for. And then from there, you can go to open communities, create a free account and connect more with rural, with oral health stakeholders. And in regard to the policy summit that we had mentioned, um, from on February 9th through 11th, OPEN had their own policy summit that took place and it was the chance for us as OPEN members to learn from members of Congress that were guest speakers at the event, as well as for us, we got the opportunity to speak to staff members of our senators in Louisiana. And in that opportunity, it was a great conference that educated us on a lot of different things on the policy landscape around oral health. Additionally, we do like to take this time to discuss upcoming events that will be occurring later on this year, all virtual at this point. Um, so save those dates and write those dates down if you would like to engage in the future. And Celeste and I will also share information on how to register. So stay tuned and keep those dates close. And uh, continuing, so like I had mentioned, um, in February, we got the chance to educate two state senators and of their, their staff members themselves about the three open policy asks. We got to speak with a staff member for Senator Bill Cassidy and Senator John Kennedy. You can click at the link there to view the leave behind materials we left with them in regard to the three asks and the research, the open network itself and about community water fluoridation in particular. So um, in our first ask, we were um, given an opportunity to meet with Senator Kennedy's staff person, as well as Senator Cassidy's staff person, as it relates to adding oral health coverage under Medicare Part B and uh, for covered dental services. And we were looking to have uh, both Senator sign or help co consider co-sponsoring the Senate Bill 9, House Bill 502, which is Medicare Dental Dental Benefit Act of 2021. And that was um, bill drafted and presented by Senator Cardin and Representative Berrigan, who both spoke with us at the policy summit in February. Um, we brought to highlight this particular information as it relates to Louisiana for this need with 41% of our seniors or adults over 18, never having seen a dentist within the past year, and also 40% of adults over 65 having lost six or more of their teeth due to tooth decay and gum disease. And we also pointed out that the number one barrier to uh, preventing, that prevents older adults from seeking dental care is cost. If, cost is, if care is not affordable, Oftentimes, individuals do not seek care, and that leads to use of the emergency room to access and treat dental infection and tooth pain. So our second ask has to do with ensuring oral health coverage for families that rely on Medicaid for health insurance. And we know in Louisiana, over 741,000 individuals um, would be affected if Medicaid cuts occurred. And we also know that 18% of the people over 65 would be affected. 51% uh, of the, the people are in communities of color. And in Louisiana in 2018, we had over 56, over 56 percent of adults who had um, visited a dentist within a year. 
So this is, is well below the national average of 66%. And with coverage through Medicaid for all, um, we would be able to provide care. And we also highlighted um, what was occurring in terms of stories in both uh, AS1 and 2. And AS1, um, I referenced a patient of mine who was 76, and she was a retired uh, teacher, had been coming to Excel for uh, over 11 years, but her Medicare coverage did not cover uh, Medicaid, her dental coverage, so uh, care was not affordable in the private sector. Um, so she eventually came to FQHC at Excel to have her work done. And uh, Lisa was able to highlight some of the work that she was doing in Eat, Move, Grow, and the stories that were shared by school nurses about tooth pain and um, infections and children not being able to learn. And um, although children have Medicaid coverage, oftentimes adults do not. And we know that in Louisiana, we do have that added adult added value benefit with Medicaid. But again, um, a large number of individuals, since Medicaid only covers up to 138% of those persons uh, uh, above the poverty level, the other individuals in our state do not have access to care. And the map that's shown here um, shows that um, the majority of the uh, offices that are, are uh, treating Medicaid patients are based in the um, Orleans and Jefferson parishes. And as you can see across the state, the number of billers for Medicaid are a lot less. And we also had shared with, um, in this document, the dental hips a map. The third ask had to do with um, funding CDC in all states with the oral health program. And we highlighted the, the work that's being done in Louisiana with um, community water fluoridation, oral health surveillance, as well as school sealant programs. And we also brought to light that although we are funded, we still, our needs are still um, great in our state and additional funding is, is greatly needed. And we, um, we will share what the outcome of this cause were in a couple of slides to come. I don't want to uh, burst the bubble <laughs> just yet. But Senator Cassidy's office was very interested in, in the point about community water fluoridation and that uh, dental treatment costs um, on average return on an investment of $20 for every dollar spent will lead to $32 in um, yearly avoided dental costs, leading to fewer days missed from school and work. So we I shared with them to the fluoridation map across the Louisiana. And as you can see, the northern part of the state and the southernmost part of the state have large areas where there are no community water fluoridation. And we know that only 31% of the state actually has access to to fluoridated water in their water systems. So we're looking forward to learning more um, in terms of how we can work with Senator Kennedy and ensuring um, that the area of community water fluoridation can be addressed in Louisiana. So that was a, a great takeaway from that call with him. Next slide. And then we, our other call with uh, Senator Cassidy's staff, um, while he um, understood and aware of oral health being uh, directly connected to overall health, and he supports um, any efforts as it relates to making sure that uh, oral health coverage, oral health is addressed. He is a strong pro proponent that overall health um, is important and is one of the reasons he supported the Action for Dental Health Act in 2018. And that bill allows organizations to qualify for oral health grants to support activities that improve oral health education and prevention of dental disease. It also enables groups to develop and expand oral health outreach programs and facilitate establishing dental homes for children and adults, including the elderly, blind, and disabled. 
He was concerned, however, when we brought forth the ask for um, coverage under Medicare and Medicaid um, about the cost. So in terms of the appropriation process that will be um, coming up this year, they will be looking to see what, what actually might occur and what they, how they can support um, in these measures. However, um, his staffer did indicate that he believes strongly in public-private partnerships and um, is a better way to serve or address oral health. Next slide. So we are very, very excited about what happened um, during the policy um, summit. And now we want you to get just as excited and become involved with some of the groups that Open Network has. Um, there is the Policy Network Response Team, which was responsible for our policy summit, where we were able to look at systematic change and uh, and um, to receive the documents and the information to prepare us for our Heal Day visits virtually. And that was truly exciting. As Lisa mentioned, the rural network response team that she's involved with as a co-lead um, has provided the opportunity to address oral health in rural communities. And then there was also the public perception NRT, which is short for Network Response Team, that has actually um, did a take 20 not too long ago on stories and how to collect stories around oral health to help position um, oral champions to bring forth the message around um, public health and oral health specifically. And then we have the LGBTQIA and RT. And so this addresses equity and inclusivity in all areas, especially when it comes to health and oral health. And then there's the super health equity in RT with a lot of great things to come. And um, one that I'm passionate and involved with is the Medicare Dental Learning Collaborative, as well as the Medicaid Adult Dental Benefit Learning Collaborative. So there are lots of ways to get involved. And you can join one, or you can join two, or you can join as many as you like. But the important thing is to get involved. And we are looking forward to having you come aboard and to work with us on these great um, issues around oral health. Next slide. Yes, thank you, everybody. This is our contact information. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions about open or how to get involved or how to connect within open communities. We look forward to hearing from you and working with you. And we hope you enjoy the summit that is happening um, and being put on through Well Ahead Louisiana and the Louisiana Oral Health Coalition. We thank them for giving us this opportunity to speak to you all. And we hope you have a very great day.